I never thought I would travel the world, and definitely I did not think I would make it to Asia. And here I am, in the electric, smoky, loud, exciting, and fascinating city of Bangkok. You know, before choosing to come to Bangkok, I was a bit scared to be honest. I thought I was going to face something crazier than the New York City Times Square. I would look at YouTube videos thinking like, wow, that's just too loud, too busy, too much. I'm going to be overstimulated all the time. Well, Bangkok has exceeded my expectations and the overstimulation has been much welcomed and so worth it. Every time I have gone out of the apartment, I have had an unforgettable time, even when I was not looking for it. There's not a dual moment in Bangkok. It was hard to pick what to talk about in this video because there's so much to cover, so I decided to divide it in different categories. First, how long should you stay in Bangkok? I would say that this ranges all the way from 3 days to a month, and even more if you want to. 3 days will give you enough time to visit the most important landmarks and enjoy some of the attractions from the most visited megalopolis. But this city is big, I stayed for 2 weeks and I'm sure I only got to see like, what, 8% of it? Exploring Bangkok can have its own YouTube channel, let me just say that. Where to stay in Bangkok? This is a tough one. I did a lot of research before coming and I could not find a clear answer to it. And that is because of my lifestyle. I work a lot, so I care about a quiet and peaceful environment that also has nearby places where I can go to eat and unwind. I couldn't compare neighborhoods for you, but I can tell you that I stayed near Asoki train station on Sukhumvit Street and I loved it here. We were in a centric area of the city as we were at a reasonable distance from all of the attractions someone would want to see. We had super cool malls and buildings nearby, we were 8 minutes away from the subway and that's walking, and we had the cutest food and coffee places around us with people we will never forget. As I already said, there is a lot to do in Bangkok, but there are things you cannot miss to really get a taste of this culture. Starting with the temples. Visit the Grand Palace. This is the most visited tourist attraction. The royalty of Thailand lived here for many years in the past, but today the king only goes there for official ceremonies. The palace is truly impressive. You will find fascinating buildings with precious Thai decoration and statues. I would say you need at least an hour of your time to explore this place. And make sure to cover your legs and shoulders. Also, it can get really, really hot in here, so make sure to bring a bottle of water and for your information, the entrance fee is of 500 baht. The experience is truly amazing, you can't miss it. From here, we headed to Wat Po. This is one of my favorite tourist attractions. Maybe because we hired a tour guide to show us around and give us the teachings of the Buddha. And that was only 300 baht. Which reminds me, you must bring cash to enter here. They do not take credit cards. And the cost is 200 baht per person. There are a couple of beautiful buildings you will discover in this complex. And they are all worth seeing, so take your time. However, the top favorite one is known as one of the oldest Buddhist temples in the country and inside it preserves the largest reclining Buddha in the city, which is 45 meters long and 15 meters tall. The statue represents Buddha before reaching Nirvana. It's absolutely magnificent. By the way, if you're in the area, I recommend you have lunch at the 6th. Wat Arun is the third temple you must visit. It's located on the other side of the river and the entrance fee is 50 baht. Wat Arun is especially known for its 82 meter tower that is entirely covered in tiny pieces of colorful porcelain. Truly beautiful. I recommend you take the boat, shuttle or ferry near the sunset time to enjoy this view. You didn't go to Bangkok if you didn't visit the market. Chatuchak Weekend Market is my ultimate favorite. I really hope you can make this visit possible. Every minute of this market was worth it. Chatuchak is the largest market in Thailand with more than 15,000 stands, 27 sections, and 200,000 visitors per day. 
The rumors say that it has become the world's largest weekend market. Surprisingly, the market is well organized and clean. I was shocked with the amount of things we saw here, all the way from the cutest pets ever born <coughs> to super authentic clothes and artifacts, cosmetics, beauty products, books, plants, and like always, the best food. Amazing, it's my third one. Oh my god. <laughs> Coconut smoothie for you guys. Freshness. Freshness. Chatuchak is open Saturdays and Sundays from 9 to 6. We recommend you grab a taxi or a grab to go there since it's a bit far from the city. Without traffic, it's a 20 minute drive. Please remember to bring enough cash to eat and shop, otherwise you're gonna struggle. And make sure you have coconut ice cream or a coconut smoothie. Highly recommend it. The floating market is another highlight. Keep in mind that it also happens only on weekends. There are boat sellers offering food, groceries, and souvenirs. You can feed the local fish and visit temples in the area. There are many other markets in Bangkok that happen at night. We were not able to visit them since at night is when I work the most, but most people say that they are super worth it, so go check them out. Okay, now let's talk about the neighborhoods and districts to visit. Chinatown, one of the main points of interest of the city of Bangkok. There are many gold jewelry stores for some reason, it's really authentic, high energy, busy, dirty, loud, colorful, and special. Most places to eat here seem to be street food trucks. We did not eat or buy anything in the area, but it's worth visiting if you are curious. If you pass by, make sure to visit Wat Trayi. It has a huge golden Buddha inside. Sukhumvit. This is where I stayed and I can definitely find myself living around here. There are a bunch of residential towers, trendy bars and cafes, a vibrant nightlife, lots of street food places and malls. In this area, you will find the famous red light districts of Bangkok, Soi Tao Boy and Nan. It's worth a stroll through here at night if you have time, but definitely don't bring children. Not far away from here, there is Siam also known as the Mega Malls District. It's about an 8-minute drive from Sukhumvit when there's no traffic, but it can be like a 20-minute drive when there's traffic. Most of Bangkok's best and biggest malls are in Siam Square. Prepare to spend the whole day here. There are so many activities and things to do and see. You'll be impressed with the number of stores, food options, things to do and places to discover. Even for kids, it's amazing. complication you have to keep in mind if you come to the mega malls is that you need to bring cash which is annoying because a lot of these stores don't have well for eating mostly if you're in the eat here they don't have enough cash to give you money back so if you come with a thousand a bad bill they're gonna be like walking around asking other people to give them cash to give you money back so bring small bills in our case we didn't have cash today because we ran out they did give us a possibility of putting money from our credit card into this card that we can use if you prefer to relax head to lumpini park it's the most popular park in the city it's nearby the malls and it's a place to see locals going for a jog practicing dance moves or just hanging out And talking about parks, Bangkok has a few parks in the city that are really important because they work as the lungs of the city and they also have a place to offer for people to unwind and get a break from the busy lifestyle of Bangkok. 
Another important neighborhood is Silam, known as one of the financial districts of the city. In here, you will also find what makes Bangkok, Bangkok. So more shopping malls, red light districts, nightclubs, and offices, of course. It's also home to the Sky Bar, which you may remember from the movie Hangover 2. We did not visit Sky Bar, but we visited other rooftops and we loved the experience. This is another thing to do in Bangkok. Go to as many rooftops as you can. Then we have the old town Bangkok. This is the historic area bordered by the Chao Praya and canals. Here is where you will find the most important Buddhist temples, palaces, monuments and museums, including the Grand Palace. When you come to this area, make sure to visit Khao San Road which, by the way, is a good place to stay if you come to Bangkok on a low budget. This is the home of the backpackers and at night it becomes the party district. We visited on a Friday night and it seems quite intense if you're sober. Definitely not a place for children. We found a super cool bar though named Misha Cheap. We enjoyed it very much, highly recommend it. One of the best things you will do in Bangkok is eat. The recommendations are way too many. I did not eat something I did not like once. So I will share all of my eating experiences with you guys. However, unfortunately, I do not have street food experiences since Nico recently got sick from his stomach and we can't afford to get sick as digital nomads so we did not want to risk it. I have heard great things about street food but we had to make an executive decision on this one. However, we did try an amazing food truck with the best Mexican food we have had in a while. Once we discovered this place, we could not stop coming. We just got complimentary uh, chicken quesadilla and I'm so excited. Ooh, it's really hot so I may burn myself but gotta do it. They have the best frozen margaritas ever and their food is just to die for. The manager is now our friend, Didi. She is the best host. You will not regret this eatery. Our daily spot was Doi Soy 12. This was a perfect spot for delicious Thai food, great coffee and excellent service. It's quiet and spacious, the perfect place for digital nomads. Coffees and Condoms is another place with great coffee, smoothies and food. In the back, they have a restaurant called Cabbages and Condoms. This place is really fun and interesting to look at. Let me show you why. I said it once and I will say it twice, the 6th. What an amazing restaurant. This is a small spot in the old town of Bangkok with the best Thai food I've had in my life. I had the green curry, which is their best dish. And when I say the best, it's the best. Nick had two pad thais and since we loved the food so much, they rewarded us with a free mango smoothie. The Continent Hotel Bangkok has two rooftops, Skyline and Bangkok Heights, both with delicious food. If you know us, you know that we love our Indian food and we have it in every country we visit. Masala Express was one of the best Indian restaurants I've been to. Everything was delicious and I'm sorry I didn't take any videos. I was enjoying my food so much. Please pass by, it's worth it. Madame Sanaid Thai restaurant gives you quite a homey vibe with super authentic Thai food. 
They also sell Italian food for some reason, but we came here for Thai. It has a high rating in Google reviews, so if you're in the area, check it out. We had the famous Tom Yum or Tom Yam. It's a type of hot and sour Thai soup with shrimp. And of course, Nick had his Pad Thai. <laughs> The Silk Road was our most fancy experience in Bangkok. It's situated in a nice hotel and is a really beautiful Cantonese restaurant with authentic traditional Cantonese food. It was an spectacular experience. I have not felt so good at a restaurant in a while. So I totally recommend you visit. We ordered Cantonese roasted duck, which we had in three parts. First, the crispy skin with crepes. Then we had rice noodles with the duck. And finally, sweet and sour sauce with duck. Please believe me, it was excellent. Yayoi is also on my top restaurants in Bangkok. It's inside the mall Icon Siam and just take a look. It was delicious. Talking about malls, something else I recommend you do and a safer way to have street food is to eat in the food courts of the malls. They are fantastic, fascinating, spectacular, they smell great. They're very sanitized and the other thing I recommend is to visit the supermarkets inside the malls. They are epic. I think your best souvenir is going to come from the supermarkets. Like honestly, is my absolute favorite thing to do here in Bangkok is to just to go to the supermarkets inside the malls. Ooh. Yeah, it's just so much fun. <laughs> just got myself a Greek yogurt ice cream for dinner. A final thing to do in Bangkok is to get a Thai massage and all the self-care you've been missing out in your life. Warning, do some research before you get a Thai massage. I definitely wasn't expecting what happened. It was a little bit weird and not relaxing during it, but it felt great afterwards. I also got laser hair removal, which was an interesting experience, but effective. Nick got himself a food massage and loved it. He was the happiest man in the world that day. I hope that this video serves you on your upcoming visit to Bangkok. And yes, I'm manifesting you are visiting because you should. Make it happen. Bangkok is super affordable, mind-blowing and unique. I hope it's now in your bucket list. See you on the next video.